Hello and welcome back to the second episode in our hilarious Centurion mini computer project extravaganza thing that we're working on. Uh, every, every time I walk out to the garage, I forget how truly massive these things are for being computers. <laughs> They're huge. And these, these are actually, I think, half height racks. I think uh, a lot of mini computers of the era had racks that were like six feet tall. Um, so uh, I guess I guess I'm happy that they're shorter. I don't know. They're still massive. Uh, but today I want to clean a few things up. But the big massive project that I want to tackle today is I want to get both of these drives outside of the rack and set them over on our workbench so we can start looking at them in more detail. Uh, I've learned a lot more about these drives since, and I'm starting to get worried about whether they're okay or not. Uh, I don't have a clue. Um, they both have removable platters, which we saw in the previous episode, but they also both have a platter inside of it. And if the heads weren't stored properly when they were moved out of the building that they were in, or when we moved them down to here, we could have had a head crash, which would destroy the heads and essentially make the drive worthless. Uh, so we need to get these out, get them onto the bench, so we can see what it is that we're up against. Uh, and we have a, a few things working against us, particularly uh, on this drive. There's, there's no bottom on it. So we'll, we'll take a look at that and see kind of what we're up against, and then we'll rip these out and put them on the bench. So uh, let, let's get started. First things first, before we get stuck into trying to get the drives out of the cabinet, we need to clean up our mess over here first. Um, I'm mostly worried about uh, kicking or dropping something on one of these terminals and breaking the plastic. This is extremely rare stuff, and I would hate to shatter one of these, especially when they're in such good shape, even, even though they're, they're filthy, they're solid, they're not broken. So I definitely want to keep them like that. So, and the same goes for the media here. I've got a ton of media, but I'm not going to be reading it anytime soon. So I'm just going to go ahead and move all of this stuff up into storage, and I'm going to move these out someplace where they're safe. So that way we can get to work on the racks themselves without fear of breaking anything else. So let's, uh, let's get to work. We got a lot of stuff to do today. Now before I go stashing this terminal over in the office so that it doesn't get damaged, uh, you guys gave me a ton of fantastic advice about these terminals. Last time when I kicked it on, I, I didn't get anything to uh, show up on the screen, and there was a, a bunch of fantastic comments about ways that I could possibly get something to show up on the screen, and it turns out it was really simple. There was just a, a little dip switch on the back that turned self-echo on. So now that self-echo is on, let's turn this old terminal on and see if we can get whatever we type to show up on the screen here. All right, I can see our flashing cursor has showed up here. We have pass with uh, whatever hilarious group of stuff that is. And so let's, uh, let's type something. There we go, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That shows that uh, I think every key on the keyboard is working. That's pretty amazing. Wait, how does the, yeah, the number pad works good too. 
And honestly, the keyboard doesn't feel that bad to type on. I, I'm willing to bet it's some kind of mechanical keyboard. I'm not entirely sure though, but uh, we'll find out when we crack this thing open. <laughs> but it's working really well, so I almost feel bad putting it over in storage for a later date, but that's where it's gotta go. Okay, so the first drive that we have is the, the drive here on the left, and that's the one that is above the actual computer itself. And I believe this is a 9427 Hawk drive. Um, that's H-A-W-K, like the bird. But we have a few problems that we're gonna have to tackle while, while removing this. One, it's just, it's massively heavy, so it's gonna take two of us for certain. Uh, and two, there's, there's no real bottom on it. So let me open it up right quick and show you what I'm talking about. All right, you'll have to excuse me uh, if the audio sounds a little funny. I'm actually laying down on the ground here to be able to look up underneath this drive. Uh, and you can see that there's, there's no uh, frame on the bottom side of it. I think there was supposed to be, at one point in time, I can see a, a pretty big standoff right here, but uh, there, there's nothing on here. And if we just set this on the workbench, I'm afraid that all the weight's gonna go on this little plastic box here, which is gonna crush it. So I think we're gonna need to put a block of wood down here and a block of wood in the back to set it on there. Um, but we can see that there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here. We've got this uh, really awesome, I guess, encoder wheel with a, a sensor here to read p potentially the position of the disc um, and a, a massive cooling fan over here. And then all the electronics and stuff is, is packed over in the back. But that's a, a really cool design. So I'm, I'm quite excited to get this out and take a look at it. Now, our other drive over here is a 9448 Phoenix drive, I believe. Like, Phoenix, the bird that rises from the ashes. So, I actually have the most hope of this one actually functioning. Partially because the name is Phoenix, uh, but also uh, it looks to be a little better covered up than the other version. I mean, the, uh, the Hawk drive didn't have the bottom on it and the top was open to the elements, but this one is fully covered top and bottom. So, I'm most optimistic about the insides of of this one being the cleanest. And honestly, if just one of the drives work, I'll be quite happy. Now again, they're super heavy, and I'll go ahead and slide this one out so we can see. Uh, but we have this metal cover on the top, which isn't bolted down to anything, and the bottom has a full metal cover on it as well. So it should be able to sit on our bench quite easily. So let's get started. Let's pull those drives out. All right, so we've got the drives out and that was not easy. They are extremely heavy. <laughs> it's insane to think that your hard drive can weigh that much. Now on the right here, we've got our Hawk drive and on the left here, we've got our Phoenix drive. And now that they're out, we can actually get around to the back and read their labels a lot easier. So we can see that the Hawk drive part number is 9427H-R. Hawk. And then our Phoenix drive doesn't actually say Phoenix anywhere on it that I can see, but it's a 9448 cartridge module drive. Uh, and all the documentation I've seen for a 9448 on the internet calls it a Phoenix drive. Now, as I said, I'm a little more confident in the Phoenix drive because it had that cover over the top of it and the bottom's covered as well. So the inside should be fairly clean. And I mean, it looks really pretty clean. I am a little bit concerned about the secondary platter that's going to be underneath this. Uh, hopefully the heads have been pulled out of the way so that during transport, the heads didn't crash into the platter. Uh, I, I don't really know how we would be able to see that short of taking it apart. Now for the Hawk drive over here on the left, I think I can see the heads 
right here that swing out and read. And it looks like they're both pulled out of the way for both the above platter and the platter below. As a matter of fact, it looks like those heads are linked and they move together. I don't, I don't, I still, I don't really know. Uh, but everything's going to need to be very carefully adjusted to make sure that the first time we do put power into it, the heads don't crash. On the back side here, we can get a look at some of the electronics. The uh, Phoenix Drive, the electronics are covered by the, the, the primary covering that goes around the outside, so we can actually get a clear look at them without needing to take anything further apart. And uh, there is some very cool circuit boards in here. There's uh, five circuit boards populated in this, but there's a space for one more circuit board. Uh, I can see that there's actually some connectors on the bottom for an additional circuit board that could go in there. I, I have no idea what it would be or if it would even be necessary. Uh, I can't imagine that somebody stole one single circuit board out of this. So I'm hoping that it just works. And then next to all those boards, we can get a look at the power supply over here. And it's got a, a big stonking capacitor on the top that says danger high voltage. I uh, don't know a whole lot about these type of can capacitors. I know that electrolytics tend to go bad, but I don't really know anything about these. Um, so if, if anybody knows more about this type of capacitor and whether they can be trusted or not, I, let me know, please. I'd love to hear about it. Now, I do want to take a look at the electronics in the Hawk drive, and I think they're right underneath this cover right here. Um, so I, I, it looks like it's pretty much ready to come off. There's just two little screws here and here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and loosen those screws up. And I don't even think I need to take them all the way out. They just need to be loose. And then the electronics cover should slide off. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. It is so cool inside of here. Just unbelievably. Oh, and then this, this folds out of the way. All right, that's... <laughs> That is super cool. All right, so apparently this is uh, all power supply related stuff, uh, partially because it says power supply board number two on it. So I'm guessing that this is power supply control over here, and there are some big stonking capacitors underneath this plate right in here. I'm actually almost kind of afraid to touch it, um, but that's what these collection of wires right here are, is they go to these massive capacitors that are just kind of hiding out underneath there. And then over here, it looks like we've got all of the control for the actual drive itself. There's a bunch of stuff going on here, and there's even some stuff that looks a little suspect. For example, I don't really know what these bits right in here are, but I can see that there's some pieces loose. Um, and that's probably not a good indication. So a lot of this, I think, is going to have to come apart. All right, so we've got the drives out, and there is just some absolutely beautiful engineering prowess going on here. I mean, it's an absolute marvel of engineering. I am in love with these drives. Uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. <laughs> and uh, even if worst case scenario, there has been some head crashes and the, you know they can't be saved, it's not all lost because they're just such cool pieces. And I'm sure that there's a ton of great things that could be salvaged off of them. But fingers crossed, that's not the case. I'm especially hopeful for this Phoenix drive. It looks to be in really good shape. Uh, and I don't know what the head, I don't know where the heads are, but uh, it looks like uh, everything's kind of been taken care of rather well with this drive. This Hawk drive, I'm a little less sure of. Things are filthy inside, everything is dirty. The whole thing's gonna have to come very far apart uh, just to get it clean, because there's tons of foam from the sound deadening foam all over it. So uh, if we powered it up now, I guarantee it would die a grisly, nasty death. Uh, but who knows, maybe it can be saved. So we're going to have to dive into these uh, a lot more in the future. But for now, I wanted them out of the cabinets because I want to focus on, well, first of all, getting one of the cabinets out of here because I, I really just want to have one cabinet for this entire computer. Um, so the other cabinet's going to go up into storage. Uh, but <laughs> It's colossally heavy too, so it's uh, still sitting back there for now until I can get some help to move it up to storage. <laughs> so I think that's enough uh, physical exertion for me today. I am 
uh, sweating like crazy and the mosquitoes are driving me insane. Uh, so I think I'm going to run away to the inside where the air conditioning is and the mosquitoes aren't. Uh, but thank you guys so much for coming along. I'm really excited about this project. I cannot express to you guys how cool I think this thing is. And I am just absolutely stoked to dig into it. Uh, I'm glad that we got the drives out today. And uh, next time, I think we're going to take a look at the computer itself in more detail, or maybe even the power supply. I'm not really sure which one we're going to take a look at, but that's going to be in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you then.